it's down to two suitors, two pens. Tennyson and Faulkner are set to write Roxanne one more letter. Will Tennyson's steady sincerity earn Roxanne's trust and affection? Or will Faulkner's flights of passion convince her he's the one? Before Tennyson and Faulkner lay their hearts on the line one more time, let's take a closer look at these two writerly Romeos. He appears the most laid-back suitor of the group, so even he is surprised by his longevity. I sort of applied as a bit of a lark, uh, with some little pushing from some friends. Tennyson was always one of the boys, but when it came down to writing, he was all business. Do you want to read it out loud? No, because the other guys are listening. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> his letters to Roxanne showed a serious side. Integrity and honor lead to the giving nature that supports a relationship. They are traits that support the flexibility that is required in a relationship. There is no gentleman who does not have honor. At the end of the day, Tennyson can't help but speculate about Roxanne's decision. Deep down, I think she's probably still hasn't made up her mind and she's gonna have a rough evening. From the start, Faulkner exuded an air of mystery, even when talking strategy. Oh, I think I'm, I'm comfortably in the middle. That's where, that's where I want to be, that's where, that's where I plan to be, so I think I'm sitting right in the back. That's where you plan to be. Yeah. But as time went on, Faulkner realized that strategy didn't apply to matters of the heart. What happened is that Roxanne became real today, and that was, uh, that was the first time she really became real to me. Faulkner is the only suitor to win two task rewards. First, he whipped up a mouth-watering menu that tempted Roxanne's palate. Then he wrote a romantic invitation to dance that was simply irresistible. My pen has danced for you many times over the last four nights. I long for the day when I am able to take you into my arms and show you the meaning of romance. To dance one night away with you would be the last my legs would ever need. To spend any more with you would be glorious indeed. I invite you into my life. Would you spend yours dancing with me? Faulkner. The man who had kept his emotions in check had become very much engaged, and there was no turning back. The reality of Roxanne, or the idea of Roxanne, was to me uh, simply a figment of my imagination. Uh, to me, she was a, she was a story that, uh, that I'd been hearing. Uh, and when that story became a reality, uh, I think there was, a, uh, there was an emotional undercurrent that I felt as well. Now it's up to Roxanne to read between the lines and make her choice between two very different men. There's a book I once read where you go through the entire book and you can't tell the, the gender of, or I should say the sex of, of the character in the book, of the, of the protagonist. And, and many people who've read that book have said that it just drives them crazy, that they can't stand it, you know, because there's just something in us that compels us to know these things. It's not spelling, it's not form, it's not punctuation, all these things that we think are important about writing. Not to say that they're not important, but it's not those things that compel us. It's not why we, you know, run to the, to the mailbox to get a letter. It's what's in the letter that matters, and it's the emotion that's conveyed, it's the message of the letter, and it's, it's the spirit in which it's written.
Gentlemen, congratulations on doing an extraordinary job parlaying your passion into elegant prose. Let's see if Roxanne has penned a note of her own. To love and win is the best thing. To love and lose, the next best. That's William Thackeray. I think he's saying that to find love is what is essential and that there are no losers if that experience has enriched us and bettered our understanding of ourselves and of our amour. So love is its own reward. Come with me. Gentlemen, over the last few weeks, you've had tempted to dance, duel, and delight your way into Roxanne's heart. It's all come down to this one final and very challenging task. This is it. After today, you will not write Roxanne again. In order to seal the deal, you'll pen a heartfelt, no holds barred love letter. And to push the envelope, we're here at the papery with assistant manager Sean Everett, who will offer some advice when it comes to putting pen to paper. Hi, I'm Sean. Hi, Sean Faulkner. Nice to meet you. Hi, Tennyson. Great to nice meet, you, meet you, too. you, too. So, I'm here to show you, enlighten you, and challenge you. You've written letters, I'm assuming. It's now a step above making it pretty, making it a little bit different, and not just a piece of paper in an envelope. So, something simple from childhood. We all used to make paper airplanes. Love is in the air. Write a sweet little note. Maybe go on a trip. Something like this is a little bit more like a treasure box. Slide the paper off, open it up. She's gonna think she's getting a ring here. Well, <laughs> if she's lucky, maybe down the road. And then a little accordion fold note. So you could write really big, I love you, or tiny little notes. No magnifying glass, I'm afraid. A little booklet here. Fairly simple, simply open it, and then each letter has a note. I tend to be wordy and I it understand. tends to, to flow, so I'm thinking of more of a, a format that would um, not be choppy in terms of one little piece, one little piece. Or well, you could also go with something very traditional, just large letter sheets. Mm -hmm. Write your note, keep it going, but you could present it in a different way. I have a little challenge for you. How about wrapping a gift? How about, about with time? Got two minutes, you can do it. Should right, we get started? So. Yes. Okay, I brought a few pieces of paper and a few little boxes. Are you comfortable wrapping a gift? Wrapping a gift? Yes, your time begins now. Thanks, Sean. Right. Good luck. I don't think I've done this since Christmas. <laughs> You're done. Or not. Yeah. Oh, helping, that's nice. <laughs> Very generous. All right, so let's see what you did. Oh. Okay, well you chose nice colors, they match the paper. It's, you won't want to look it's, at it's, the it's, underside. It's organic, <laughs> we'll call it organic. <laughs> it's very yes. secure, it's very secure. Yes, no she will never get into, into the letter. <laughs> All right, now you chose an interesting combination of colors and you put the bow on the bottom of the package, <laughs> but that's okay. You're going for a unique it's because vision. I'm unique. That's exactly, right. exactly. See so. organic, I say earthy. <laughs> we'll, we'll call it a draw. How's that? Gentlemen, before we head back to the Brook Street Resort, you'll have 25 minutes and $25 to assemble the complete package, whatever you need to fashion an incomparable love letter. And so to your marks, off you go. So I'll get you a couple of yards of that, and okay. then I think you're gonna be all set. You've decided? Yes, I have. I'm just going to keep it simple. Good choices. Thank you. I'm hoping not to use the pen and use the ones we already have. So that'll be $19.67. Thank you. Thank you. I'll bag that up for you. So these are $1.50 a seal. And then do you want me to do a rough calculation or do you want me to just ring it all through? Let's just do it. Okay. I'm not concerned about it. I think the colors you've chosen are beautiful, very vibrant. The beautiful flowers, I think she'll like that. And especially the little 
Yeah, the flowers are in. All right. Rob? You've chosen some beautiful things. Um, the only problem, you've gone over your total. I've gone over my budget. You've gone over your total, but... Not you... a problem. Not a problem? All right. Here's the 25 they gave me. Okay. And I'm gonna just add a little of my own to make sure Roxanne gets the perfect, uh, gets the perfect little thing. Excellent. And I think you're gonna need this. There you go. <laughs> Great, thanks. You're welcome. Good luck. you've had your love letter lesson, you're ready to begin. May your quills be as quick as your wit, and remember, all's fair in love and letters. Right on. Time's up, gentlemen. May your letters win her heart. Beautiful. Thank you. Brevity has not been one of my <laughs> key words uh, uh, of the last uh, little while. Normally I write lengthy notes. Uh, today I kept it very short, very concise. I made some very subtle references that if she read into my previous writings and she's looking back and thinking, they might make sense. Um, I, I just sort of wrote a, a quick poem and that was it. It was very, very short. The sides that uh, I think the show wanted to emphasize, uh, the romantic side of a, of a personality, is one that I'm quite reluctant to, to show publicly. And I've been asked to do that on this show, obviously. Over the past few weeks, we've rifled through the pages of literary history, tracing a captivating paper trail of letters penned from one lover to another. Compelling letters full of longing and love, passion and promise, rivalry and rebuke. The power of a love letter is really quite remarkable. Just a few words on a page folded tenderly into an envelope and sealed with a kiss can change the course of destiny. For who can resist the thrill of lines delivered from his hands to yours? Words shared with the one person who appreciates the intensity of each syllable. And oh, what intensity. We've sifted through hundreds of love letters written by poets and princes, lightweights and Lotharios. Some were heartwarming, some were titillating, some were infuriating. But what every love letter had in common was an undercurrent of emotion coursing between its lines. Here are some of the letters we found impossible to resist. My beloved angel, I grasp you, I kiss you, I caress you, a thousand of the most amorous caresses take possession of me. As for my heart, there you will always be, very much so. I have a delicious sense of you there, but my God, what is to become of me if you have deprived me of my reason? My most dear Lord, King and husband, the hour of my death now approaching, I cannot choose but out of the love I bear you, 
advise you of your soul's health, which you ought to prefer before all considerations of the world or flesh whatsoever, for which yet you have cast me into the many calamities and yourself into many troubles. But I forgive you all, and pray God to do so likewise. I have not spent a day without loving you. I have not spent a night without embracing you. I have not so much as drunk one cup of tea without cursing the pride and ambition which force me to remain apart from the moving spirit of my life. If you plan on writing a love letter any time soon, here are a few do's and don'ts to keep in mind. Do take the time to think before you write. Focus on what the person means to you and what you really want to say. Do make the moment special. Inspire yourself in order to inspire others. Sit in your favorite chair, looking over the garden. Do write, and write often. Even if you don't mail any of the letters, let your thoughts pour out on paper. Your soul will listen, even when your lover won't. Don't write or send the letter in haste. You might regret tomorrow what you mail today. Don't come up with any more excuses. Just start writing. Here are the final two letters, the two you've been waiting for. Thanks. Ugh. How are you feeling? I don't know, just ugh, really nervous. Sense of anticipation? More sense of dread, <laughs> I'm afraid. Mm. Read between the lines. Trust your heart, you've had lots of practice. It just seems so final, you know? And um, I just, question some of my decisions and I just hope I know what decision to make. Well, I think that they put a lot of effort into this, a lot of heart and soul, and you'll see truly who they are. And I've really enjoyed being your confidant here for the last few weeks, but we've reached a point in the journey where I think you need to go on alone and read these yourself. So I wish you the best of luck. And whatever you decide, I hope it makes you happy. Thanks for your help with everything. You've just been amazing. You're welcome. I saw you in my dreams again last night. I was happy to see you there, smiling. We've been through a lot these last few days. I was scared you might be crying. This book of letters is just for you, and I wrote it like this so no one could open it but you. <laughs> when we first touched during the dance floor debacle, I wanted it to be perfect, but that was not possible. What I did come to learn was that there was another girl there, it's that girl I want to know if you'll let me in there. I want to meet the girl I met when I was blind to share a laugh with and get to know her mind. I invited you into my life. Will you ask me into yours too? Dearest Roxanne, with two suitors remaining, there should be one whom you would rather share your thoughts, feelings, and stories with, one whom you would rather listen to their stories, adventures, and perspectives, one with talents and personality that may complement you well, patient when stability is needed, and dependable when you need that little extra support. Roxanne, this part of the journey is almost over, and I just think it would be better if we were together. Tennyson. I I just feel overwhelmed right now, you know? Um, I came here having never received a love letter of any kind, and to receive two letters like this today, 
I just... <laughs> I just, uh... because there's been a lot of talk about love during the show, and um, I take it very seriously. I, I am uh, I am somebody that's convinced that there is that there is somebody out there. And when you meet that person, that's, uh, that's where you are. I am available and I am open, and um, if our first date is successful, because that's what this show is all about, well, hey, uh, maybe I'll let her have my home phone number or something. <laughs> there's been this real emotional process and you know it's just amazing experience to have people you've never met um, just write to you and try to connect with you and it's just opened up my imagination uh, about the way that we relate to people in the world you know about the way we relate to each other Next time on The Letters, Rediscovering the Art of Courtship. This will be the last time you'll open your mailboxes. You may now retrieve your letters. Two worthy writers remain. Who will Roxanne choose? Sort of a letdown in a way to get this letter. There are a couple spelling errors. Coming up next time on The Conclusion of the Letters, Rediscovering the Art of Courtship.